Hello, today we're going to talk about direct and indirect objects in sentences, plus a little bit of wisdom about who versus whom. So what's the object of a sentence? If we already know what the subject and the predicate are in a sentence, the object is the next piece to add in. The object of the sentence is present when a noun is receiving action from the verb or from the predicate. For example, in the sentence, he ate the watermelon, he is the subject, ate is my predicate, verb, and the watermelon is my object. What's being eaten? The watermelon is. I'm receiving the action of eating. In the next sentence, the delinquents spray painted the wall. What did they spray paint? Again, the wall. Our teacher passed out what? Candy. This is the item receiving the action or the thing being passed out. So that's my object. Subject, predicate verbs, and object. However, don't fall into the trap of assuming that any random word that appears after a verb must be an object, because that's not necessarily true. Other kinds of words can go after a verb too. For example, adjectives, adverbs, and other kinds of expressions or verbals or helping verbs can go in close proximity to the verb, and that doesn't make them objects. If I say her new album is amazing, the word amazing is not an object, it's just an adjective describing the album. So that's an important distinction to keep in mind. What's also important is that there are two different kinds of objects, direct and indirect ones. Direct objects are the primary noun or item being acted upon by that action verb. And it kind of answers what. So in these five sentences, the direct objects are in bold. She gave the present to him. Well, the present is the thing being given. It's the direct recipient of that action gave. An indirect object is if, sorry, occurs when the direct object is going to another recipient or something else is happening to the object now. It answers to, for, with, why, etc. So who's getting that present? He is. She gave the present to him. Who's the book for? Bell. Who are these omelets for? Our parents. All right. To whom are these math notes being given? Me. And number four is important because it kind of breaks the pattern and shows you that the direct object isn't always first. It most commonly is, but that's not a rule. So make sure you pay attention to actually which word or noun is truly receiving the action of the verb. The math notes are being given. I am not being given to anyone. That's an important distinction. Brutus runs marathons for charity. So, now we were brought to the issue of subject versus object pronouns. We've already established what the subject of a sentence is, sentence is excuse me, and what the object of a sentence is. So, there are different kinds of pronouns for those cases as well. The subject pronouns are I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. And obviously those are supposed to go in the subject place to replace a subject noun. So they're going to appear traditionally in the first half of a sentence, unless the sentence structure is weird. So I bought a box of cookies would be a correct use of a subject pronoun. The object pronouns are me, you, him, her, it, us, and them. Those will most likely appear toward the second half of the sentence since they replace an object. So the box of cookies are for me. And the subject is box of cookies, but who are they for? Moi. Okay, so we need to think carefully about which pronouns are going in which place in the sentence. The I and me example is the one that's most commonly mixed up, but we'll get into that more in a little bit. Next, we're going to talk about who versus whom and try to settle this for you once and for all. And we're talking about this today because if you can identify a subject versus an object in a sentence, then you can totally do this. Who and whom is a subject-object problem? 
who is a subject pronoun. You use it to replace or describe a subject. So if I'm talking about my brother, he's the subject of the sentence right now. So I'm going to use the word who to describe him in this interruption in the middle of the sentence. My bro who ate my sandwich is mean. Also in the next bullet, sorry, who asked you to prom? Well, someone did the asking, so this someone is the subject, so I will use who. The opposite of that would be to ask, whom are you asking to prom? Now, in this case, you are doing the asking, and I'm just trying to find out who's receiving your question, or who's receiving your asking. Therefore, I'm using whom, the object pronoun, the opposite. We'll talk more about objects in a moment. And back over here, whoever finishes the race first will get a prize. So I don't know who my subject is, but whoever finishes first is my subject. Therefore, I'm using whoever instead of whomever. And again, whom is an object pronoun to replace or describe an object. The other key thing is that if you see a preposition next to it, like to, for, with, by, in, or any of those other prepositions, it's automatically going to be whom, which is important for bullets like two and three. I'll give a prize to whomever finishes the race first. This is the opposite of the other question three because I'm the one doing the prize giving. Someone's going to be my recipient now. So therefore, I'm going to say whomever in this spot. Also, going back to the first example sentence, over here, the bro was the subject of the sentence. Now, my bro, whom I adore. Within the interruption, I am adoring someone, like my brother. And it's in this moment, I'm behaving like the subject because I'm doing something, so I'm going to use whom. I hope that makes some sense. And a lot of people use a memory tip like the one down here. And they think, okay, if you can replace the word with he, then that's your clue to use the word who. So instead of he ate my sandwich, who ate my sandwich. Likewise, if you can replace the word with him, an object pronoun, use whom. So instead of I'll give a prize to him, I'll give a prize to whom. That is a great trick to help you out with questions like this. In this practice, I want you to try to figure out which pronoun I need. And down here, I want you to tell me if I have underlined a direct or indirect object. And if you're ready, let's check out the answers. My brother and I want to go fishing. Here's a compound subject, and since we're still in subject mode, I'm going to use the subject pronoun I instead of the object pronoun me. She needs to take turns and give the car keys to me. She's the subject, she's doing the giving, and then I'm just going to receive the car keys. So I'm going to say me, which is an object pronoun. Whom should I talk to about getting a refund? I'm doing the talking, and I'm just trying to figure out to whom I should speak. And this word to is another hint that I'm going to want whom, an object pronoun. I owe this award to my mother. Without whom, I wouldn't be here. So again, I wouldn't be here. I'm the subject without her an object. Who ate the last cookie? So someone else did the eating, not me, unfortunately, which is why I'm asking who that was. Who's the subject who did the action? Number six, I'm going with preposition whomever. And again, I'm the subject, so I'm going with someone else. And down here, just as a little practice, we bought an iPhone for my sister. The iPhone is the thing being bought, so it's the direct object. Someone needs to give me some water. 
even though the word me is coming before water, this is still the indirect object because the water is being given. I'm just receiving that water being given. I know that's a mouthful, but that's an important distinction. Our boss gave a $100 bonus to the employee of the month. So this is also an indirect object for the same reason as number two. The $100 bonus is what's being given. The employee of the month is just receiving that direct object. I hope that was helpful. I know that was a lot. Feel free to rewatch the video if you need it, but otherwise, thanks for listening.